Whiting is a very versatile and beautiful and delicious fish. And I'm gonna show you how to make some lovely spicy whiting goujons. So this is what a whiting fillet looks like. So it's a really, really lovely fish. You can steam it, pan fry it. You can make fish cakes from it. Uh, I've just literally removed the skin. There's no bones in it. And I've cut it into this size here roughly kind of like at an angle there so that's probably about one this size here cut into that there remove the skin your fishmonger will do this for you i've done it i have a fillet knife um, and it makes it very easy it's a lovely lovely good value plentiful sustainable too which is really important so we're going to crumb it we're going to flour egg a breadcrumb but into the breadcrumbs we're going to mix it first of all i'll get a spoon and then i can show you i'll turn on my pan just have that preheated so we're going to kind of spice it up. We're going to put in some nice curry powder, and this is a medium curry powder. So I'm going to put in two spoonfuls of that. Goes in there. And then into the curry powder, we're going to put in some turmeric. So this will give a really lovely color. So just roughly about a large teaspoonful of that. And then to give it a really nice flavor and texture is sesame seeds. I love them. So I'm just using uh, the white sesame seeds. You can use the black one if you want to. Um, they're you can get them just in the Asian supermarket. And a little bit of chopped parsley. So I have a little bit of flat leaf parsley here, or you can use curly. So we'll just chop this, mix this all together. Then we're gonna flour and bread crumb them. So curve your fingers, and then we're gonna chop this nice and fine. And then just rock the knife over and back. So a little bit of parsley goes in there. You could use coriander. I forgot to say you could use some chili powder if you want them really nice and spicy. That goes in there. And one more thing, nearly forgot, some lemon zest. So I'm gonna use the lemon zest in my salsa too. So I'll just use my microplane. So this will give lovely freshness here. So this is a great fish for your children, for your kids, for the family to eat. And really it's great to see so many people just enjoying fish and eating more of it. So just mix all these spices together. Just, you can use your hands if you want to. Into the breadcrumbs. And then we're gonna coat these. So that's what our uh, crumbs look like there. The panko breadcrumbs, you can mix half and half if you want to. And they're just a kind of a dry breadcrumb, which are lovely and crispy and uh, lovely flavor. Okay, I always like to have a plate. So we're gonna flour. So I'm gonna put a little bit of salt into the flour. We have one egg, a uh, little bit of milk, and then we also have our nice uh, breadcrumbs all done. So let's just dip it into the flour. This technique is known as the panne. So you dip it in flour, then into the egg, one egg, a little bit of milk, them into your breadcrumbs so it can be done ahead you can get some extra whiting and then what you can do is you can make extra of this and then you can freeze it people love things they can make ahead and keep these in the freezer or keep them in your fridge for about three to four days max so it's lovely when you get it nice and fresh these are lovely in a wrap i'm just going to literally serve them with a little bit of mayonnaise and a nice little kind of tomato salsa with that okay so i'll move the flour out of the way so we dip them in the flour the flour helps the egg stick to the actual uh, whiting and then I'm going to keep one hand in the egg and one hand just in the breadcrumbs So you just pat that and that's what we have there So that nice little bit shake off any excess you can pop them into the fridge. I'm going to cook these straight away So remember one hand in the egg. You don't want your uh, fingers completely covered with the crumbs. So that's just a little tip for you So the whiting there's no bones as I said it's a very very lovely and um, delicious fish and it's plentiful and sustainable, which is what we want. And when I go out in the boats and I meet the fishermen and just see how hard they work, you know, as a chef, you're kind of in awe of them because they really are such amazing people. They work in such really difficult weather conditions sometimes. Sometimes the sun is shining, but not all the time. We do live in Ireland. But, you know, we're an island and I, it's great to see so many people. I definitely think a lot more people are eating fish and that's really fantastic. So thank you. Enjoy it. Our twins, they're nine, Connor and and they love fish and they love these, so they will. And you can make these ahead, so it's lovely to make your own fish goujons. When you get lovely fresh whiting, your fishmonger will, um, will pin bone it or take, remove the bones and will skin it for you. They'll do all the hard work. So now, lovely. I'm going to just make a little bit of room. Onto the pan, we're going to put some oil and a little bit of butter. And we're going to put our fish and then just wash your hands after this. So the butter will give really, really nice uh, flavor and the rapeseed oil will stop the butter from burning. So that's now at this stage, you cover this in cling film and pop it into the fridge, which is perfect. 
swirl around the butter and literally put the whiting goujons just in the pan. I picked a nice big wide pan so you could see just for the video. You can deep fry them, you can bake them in the oven, I should have said that. Uh, just a little bit of parchment paper. Okay, I'm gonna move them to a smaller ring because I don't want them to burn on the outside. I'm just gonna wash my hands now, especially after touching raw fish. So that technique everyone has known as the pan is, so when you dip it in some flour, egg wash, and then your breadcrumbs. So you're, um, you can have all that done ahead. And that's the kind of recipes that we certainly like to make ahead at home. So don't be tempted to turn them too quickly. We'll turn them in a minute. I'm gonna make a little bit of room here. And then we're gonna do our nice little tomato salsa. So with the tomato salsa, we're going to use these lovely cherry tomatoes, which are grown in Ireland, which is great. And then we're gonna put in also a little bit of lemon zest into it and a little bit of red onion. So I'll just get my tomatoes. We're literally going to cut this just in half. And this is a lovely fresh salsa here that we're gonna make. So I've turned down the gas just to explain what I'm doing with the fish. Okay, I'll flip them over now in a moment. So just cut these lovely sweet cherry tomatoes. Probably half of this onion should be enough, okay? So that's roughly half an onion there. And then a little bit of lemon zest works really well in this. Gorgeous. Now, just gonna stop that for a moment, I'll come back to it. Let's have a little look at the fish. So let's have a little turnover. That beautiful golden brown color is what, exactly what I want. The texture from the sesame seeds, honestly, you will really enjoy these. And if you find that the pan has got a little bit cool, because it's a big pan, you can pop it onto your middle ring there, but they really cook so fast. And fish does cook really, really fast. So let me see, Third, turn that up a little bit. A little bit more oil, just a wee drizzle, because the breadcrumbs will act like a sponge. So remember, we've seasoned up the flour, so no need to add any more salt onto this. We're going to start to finish this now. We're gonna get a little bit of fresh basil in here. So the basil and the tomatoes, it's a classic combination. Roll it up. Not unlike what I did with the, with the uh, parsley. Curve your fingers and then literally put the basil in there. Now this can be lovely if you literally pan fry the fish. I'm gonna turn it down. Uh, if you pan fry the fish and then serve it with the salsa, it really is lovely. Some lovely Irish rapeseed oil and then a little bit of salt and pepper in this. Now, yeah. so if you can have this made ahead, uh, I'm obviously gonna serve it up, but it will keep for a day or two in your fridge covered in cling film. You can sweat off the onions, you can put a little bit of balsamic vinegar in there if you want to, which will give a really nice flavor. I'm sure I have some here, so I might as well use it. Just a splash, works really well. There we go. So that'll give lovely acidity and freshness to it. So I'm gonna go back over here just to check in the fish. So are they cooked? Not yet, but they're cooking up really nicely. And because they're small, and you can see, you just need to be careful with it. You can turn them over like that. And they're not far from done at all. So something like this, you know, serve it with rice, potatoes, potato wedges, chips, whatever you want to, they're very nearly done. And the heat of the pan, because it's filleted, it's off the bone, there's no skin. All you're doing is just cooking it through and crisping up those lovely breadcrumbs. So it should be nearly done. Actually, this is a really good tip for you. So now if you come in here, just with the, just literally with the knife, you're looking at that, it just needs another couple of seconds. Just don't be nervous about touching or feeling things because that's really, really important when you're cooking fish because you can overcook it and then you just want it cooked, that it's not overcooked at the same time. So that's our lovely little salsa. A little bit of curry mayonnaise, this is really easy. We're gonna use a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of curry powder, and then a little squeeze of lemon, or you can use lime. I was thinking, will I use lime, but it, you know, because we're using the lemon, why not use the lemon? So using a teaspoonful. So half of the, of the turmeric, and then we're gonna put in, this is just regular mayonnaise, I should have said that. So that goes in there, a squeeze of the lemon and then a little bit of salt and pepper, and then we mix this all together. So this is, can be made ahead. I've switched off the pan, everyone, because these are already cooked. And just mix this all together. 
you can put some chili sauce into it you can put the merry rose sauce i definitely think mayonnaise is lovely and actually these are really nice in a wrap so if you've got some sort of tortilla wraps some of these lovely little uh, white and goujons some of the tomato salsa smear that lovely mayonnaise over the wrap and wrap it and eat these fresh kind of like a taco it's absolutely gorgeous so i'm going to serve this up i'm going to bring over my little plate here so first thing we're going to do is just arrange the lovely tomato salsa in a dish it's always better if you can make this an hour or two or even overnight that mayonnaise there that'll keep for easily a week in the fridge it's great you can see the lovely color and that is from the turmeric and the curry powder yum okay next thing we're going to do is just literally lift off these lovely little white ingredients and they're quite fragile so be careful you can put them on kitchen paper first if you want to and that will remove any excess oil so just literally arrange these just onto your plate and again you can bake them off in the oven i should have said that and that will take about maybe 12 minutes uh, at one about 160 170 should be perfect so just literally lift this off how nice does that look and this is the one here sorry mella you can see that it's cooked through it's beautiful and white and these will be the nicest kind of fish fingers homemade fish fingers that i think your kids will enjoy nice big bowl of salad some potato wedges some chips work really well with that so again just to recap whiting it's plentiful sustainable good value for money and it's a lovely fish and we're supporting irish fishermen which is really really important in that lovely crumb you can make it ahead and you can freeze them you can have them made and kept in the fridge and just literally pan fry them or bake them in the oven or you can deep fry them and then the mayonnaise and the tomato salsa so that's my um uh, spicy whiting goujons with the curry mayonnaise and the tomato salsa.